Hari Om. Uh, namaste to everybody. Welcome to the Stotra Bodha series, talk number 21. So today we are excited to have um, the keynote topic speaker, Dr. Usha Jaiswal. So she's going to talk on five elements, Panchaputas within and without. And so today's program will have uh, invocation um, and we have some Stotra recitation, uh, Sangeet Anjali and then uh, my father, Dr. Prabhakar, will introduce the speaker, and then we'll have the keynote uh, talk, and the concluding remarks will be by Dr. Vyas Gayatri, and vote of thanks will be by Sri Govindraj. Um, so, welcome. And first, I will play uh, the invocation stotram, but uh, we'll start with some Shanti mantras before that. Uh, Raghavagar, do you have a chance to? Chant some Shanti Mandali. Veda Kusumandali. Veda Kusumandali. Okay, I'll, I'll just do it. Om Shri Guru Bhyonam Harihi Om Om Bhadram Karne Vishrunyama Devaha Bhadram Pashe Maksha Bhiriya Jatraha Rai Rangai is to Stuvagum Sastanu Hihi Vyase Madeva Hitam Yedayuhu Swastina Indro Rutashravaha Swastina Usha Vishwaveda Swastina Star Kshio Arishthani Mihi Swastino Bruhas Pater Dadhatu Om Shanti 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 Hi Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Upunaktu, Sahavir Yam Karava Bahai, Tejasvina Badhi Tamas Tuma with Vishabahai, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Patrani Pashantu, Makashit Dukhava Agbavet. Om Shanti 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 Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamuduchete Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishete Om Shanti 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 Vokarzotan Shenchame, my yes chame, preenchame, no kamas chame, kamas chame, so manasas chame, patran chame, sreyas chame, vasyas chame, yasas chame, bagas chame, dravin and chame, yanta chame, darta chame, kremas chame, drutis chame, vishwan chame, mahas chame, some bit chame, gnatran chame, sus chame, prasus chame, siren chame, layas chamarutan chame, mrutan chame, yakman chame, namayas chame, jiva to chame. Dirghayutvanchame, Namitranchame, Bayanchame, Suganchame, Shayananchame, Sushachame, Sudinanchame, Om Shanti 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 Sanyanam Pragnanam Vijnanam Jana Dabhijanat Sankalpamanam Prakalpamanam Upakalpamanam Upakriptam Kriptam Shreyo Vasiya Ayat Sambhutam Bhutam Chitra Ketu Prabhana Bhan Samban Jyotishma Guste Jasvana Tapakas Tapanna Bhi Tapanna Rochano Rochamana Shobhana Shobhamana Kalyana Om Shanti 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 Ayurda Agne Jushano Gruta Pratiko Grutayoni Redi Gritam Pitva Madhucharu Gavyam Piteva Putra Mabhirakshata Dimam Om Shanti 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 Over to you, Anjan Prasadgar. Thank you so much. So I'll play an invocation song. Namaste. My name is Meenakshi Pachava. My name is Pranati Pachava. We are going to sing Parvati Kumarang song. 
இந்த ராகம் ஆஃப் நாட்டக்குறிஞ்சி செட்டு ரூபகத்தாளம் கம்போசர் முத்துசுவாமி தீட்சித் அவர் Stotranjali by Uday Ravi on Kunjika Stotra. Asya Shri Siddha Kunjika Stotra Mahamantrasya Brahma Vishnu Rudra Rushayaha Gaitri Trishthapa Anathak Chandamsi Shri Mahakali Mahalakshmi Mahasaraswati Devata Shri Durga Parameshwari Pritiyarthe Asya Jamanasya Cha मम इष्टाम सिद्ध्यर्थे जपे विनियोग ध्यान देवी प्रपन्ना हरे प्रसीद प्रसीद मतर्जगतखिल प्रसीद विश्वरी पाही विश्वीश्वरी देवी चराचर सिया या देवी मधुकटभ प्रमथिनी या महिषोन्मूलिने या धूम्रे क्षण चंड मुंड शमनी या रक्त बीजाशने या शुंभादिशुंभदैत्यदमनीया सिद्धलक्ष्मी परा सा चंडी नवकोटिशक्तिशक्ति मं पात विश्वरी 
शिवोवाच शुणु देव प्रवक्षा कुंजिका स्त्रोत्रुतम प्रभावेण चंडी जापशुभो भवे नकवचम नारकलास्त्र कील कन्नरहस्यक सूक्त ना ध्यान चन्यासोन चर्चन कुंजिका पाठमात्रेण दुर्गा पाठ फल लभेत अति गुह्यतरम देवी देवाना दुर्लभम गोपनीय प्रयत्ने स्वयोनीव पार्वती मरण मोहन वश्यम स्तंभनोच्छाटनाक पाठमात्रेण संसिधे कुंजिका स्त्रोत्रुतम नमस्ते रुद्धरूपिण्ये नमस्ते मधुमर्दिने नम कैठभारिण्ये नमस्ते महिषादिने नमस्ते शुंभहंद्रे चाशुंभासुरघातिने जागृत हि महादेवी जपम सिद्ध कुरुष्व मे ऐंकारी सृष्टिपाए ह्रींकारी प्रतिपालिका क्लींकारी कामिण्ये बीजूपे नमोस्ते चामुंडा चंड घाती चाकारी वरदाये विच्छे चयदा नि नमस्ते मंत्रूपिणे धाम धीम धूम धूर्जटे पत्नी वाम वीं वूं वागधीश्वरी क्राम क्रीं क्रूं कालिका देवी शाम शी शू मे शुभम कुरो हुम 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 कारूपिण्ये जम 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 जंभनादिने भ्राम भ्रीं भ्रूं भैरवी भद्रे भवान्ये ते नमो नम अंगंटम तम पम यम वीं शुम ऐं वीं हम क्षम धिजाग्रम धिजाग्रम त्रोटय त्रोटय दीप्त कुर कुर स्वाहा पां पी शूं पार्वती पूर्ण खाम खीं खूं खेचरी तथा शाम सी सोम शक्त सती देव्या मंत्र सिद्ध Yeah, one last uh, invocation song. Namaskaram. My name is Santoshi Amarnath. Now I'll be singing Mula Dara, written by Papa Nasim Shilam.
That was so very sweet. <laughs> so now uh, I'd like uh, my father, Dr. Prabhakar, to please introduce the speaker and the topic. So, Om Agne Naya Supatha Raya Asman Vishwani Deva Vayunani Vidwan Yuyot Shasma Juhurana Meno who is Tam Tena Mabutim Bidhema? Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Welcome to you all for a wonderful program on Stotra Anjali series. And uh, this today we have got a talk on the Panchaputas, the five elements, Prasivya Pseyo Vayura Akasha. And uh, this is the, these are the five elements which fill the entire atmosphere and everybody is uh, committed to that. And the Panchabhutas are also committed to us. And uh, we have today a good speaker, the keynote speaker, Dr. Usha Jaiswal from Haridwar, working since a long time as associate professor in the Deva Samskruti University. And we happened to have a chance to meet her when we attended a conference, a waves conference in Haridwar long back. But anyway, till afterwards, we are connected and trying to do some common work, especially studies on Bhagavad Gita. And she was telling that she is a professor and healer also in the department. And uh, she will do a lot of healing work and curing and suggestions and all that. But uh, so she has the presentation on Panchabhutas. And moreover, we have here the Vyas Gayatri doctor. Long, long back, she said, Sir, Panchabhuta Galabagge on the seminar, Madhya Sir, and, uh, but somehow Panchabhutas have not appeared now. I mean, appeared since now then, but somehow uh, today is the day. When we can have a talk on Prithivi, Ap, Teja, Vayu, Akasha. And uh, not only they are outside, they are inside us. But when once our body, Parthiva Deha, it is called, tries to stop functioning here, then the, all the Panchabhutas will go and merge with the universal Panchabhutas. And that's what our Ejul Veda points out to us. So, very important. And from earth only everything is, uh, is uh, produced or everybody is getting on. So Prithivi and uh, then water, Tejas, the brilliance, Vayu, Yantaraksha and Akasha. So importantly, we have Agni, Vayu and Surya. They are the presiding deities for these three Lokas and these three elements. Prithivi is Agni and Antariksha is Vayu, and Surya is Akasha, or, and what is Akasha? In Saitri Upanishad, we come to know, we talk about Brahma, who is the originator, promoter, sustainer, etc., for the, all these Panchabhutas, Paramatma, and what is the size of that person? Upanishad tells you, Akasha Sariram Brahma, so Brahma is having Akasha Sarira, where from uh, everything is given to us. Prithvi depends upon Akasha. And every and on moreover, all these uh, Panchabhutas are interdependent. And uh, therefore, their cooperation and uh, to be in controls is most important. And we have got a beautiful uh, Shanti Mantra also. Prithvi Shanti Rantaret Shagum Shanti. Jeushantir, Dishashantir, Agnishantir, Vayushantir, Surya Shanti, Chandrama Shantir, Natchatrani Shanti, Nadi Shanti, etc. Shanti Reva Shanti, Taya Shantiya Prasamagum Samajatu. 
So when there's shanti for all these Panjabhutas, Prashamana is our own worries and fatigue and uh, all sorts of differences. And all those differences in body outside will be quite calm and pleasant the moment the Panchabhutas are in their own order, in their own controls, in their own usual thing. When there is a Udhrutatvam of any of them, we are being placed to problem. But anyway, we always make every day is one of the important mantras of Viraja Homa found in the Mahana and Upanishad and which Homa is being performed by those people who take to sannyasa. So when they take sannyasa, they do Viraja Homa and purify themselves that they can lead a different ashrama life. And when once people get into the Grihastha Ashrama, they have to do Viraja Homa. Sorry, Laja Homa. So Laja is gluing and Viraja is trying to get it out. So their Dravya is different. So Laja Homa for Grihasthas. Viraja Homa for... That means uh, when doing Laja Homa, you have to invite uh, the cooperation and support of all the Panchabhutas inside our body and so on. So it's a very big subject. Like that, we have independent vahutis and then prayers. So not much talking. We are very anxious to listen to the presentation by Dr. Usha, whom we have been asking number, a number of times. Amma, you also appear and share your thoughts. But today, God has willed, Anchabhuta has willed that she is on the screen and we are very happy. Welcome to you, madam. You are... See, you are all your expertise and healing should be expressed here. Thank you very much. Welcome. Om Shanti. Thank you very much, sir, <clears throat> for giving this wonderful opportunity uh, to speak uh, in front of all of you. And uh, I start my presentation. Uh, I hope uh, all of you are able to see the presentation. Sir, are, are you able yeah, to madam, see the presentation? Yeah, we can see it. We can see it. Yes, okay. yes. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I will talk about uh, the prana. And then afterwards, I will talk about the five elements. <clears throat> so first, uh, we should understand what is prana. Prana is the element which is inseparable to the soul. Because once prana is there, our existence is there. Once prana leaves the body, soul also leaves the body. So prana is the vital element which sustains our existence in this life. All our relationships. All our activities, everything is associated with this prana. <clears throat> According to our Gurudev, Pandit Sri Ram Sharma Acharya, he is giving certain uh, <clears throat> comments, certain information relating to prana and the consciousness. So I am giving the brief uh, note of my Gurudev. According to him, quality of prana is influenced by the consciousness of the people surrounded by the individual. So if we want to improve the quality of the prana, it is depending upon the people with whom we are associated. Uh, normally a child is associated with his parents, with his siblings, with the neighbors. So depending upon their elevation of consciousness, the elevation of the prana, our prana will be affected. So if we want to enhance the quality of the prana, the surroundings are also very important. So in the same way, the development of the prana is influenced by the past lives and scars. So in the past lives, what we have done, that is carrying forward in this life, in this incarnation. 
So this development is also depending upon the previous incarnations and previous lives, what we have done. And uh, prana uh, manifests in our life as a thought, as an emotion, and awareness in human beings. <clears throat> so uh, when we are talking about the thought, uh, there are three types of thought. One is the higher level of thought. Second one is the middle level of thought. Last one is the lower level of thought. Higher level of thought is the thought <clears throat> which is uh, uh, given by the great people. Just like uh, Swami Vivekananda, he said, man is the creator of his own destiny. Till date, we are following his work. That is eternal. The highest, higher level of thought influenced by thousands and thousands of people from the time immemorial. And uh, this middle level of thought, it is having existence for some period of time. For some period, it will have an, an influence and afterwards it will fade away. And the lower level of thought, just like uh, the thoughts coming and going, we are sitting, we are sitting and sometimes some thoughts coming uh, afterwards, some other thoughts are coming. There is no life for those thoughts. Here, we are talking about those higher level of thought. <coughs> Prana manifests itself as thought, as emotion and awareness in human beings. So awareness also varies from person to person. Some people are more aware about the surroundings, about the people, about the environment, but other people, they are not at all aware. That awareness also depends upon the prana in the individual. We'll go further. And just as oil reflects in the lamp, prana reflects in the eyes, speech, and behavior and intellect of an individual. So some people, if you see, their eyes are like very, very attractive. There is a glow, there is a light in their eyes. Spectacular eyes. And some people, they speak, it's like a parents coming from the world. So all these, uh, why it is different, uh, why some people are more uh, having extraordinary knowledge and talent, only because of the prana. So good health, long life, strength, these are all the manifestations of the prana. And some people, they are very intelligent, they are having great knowledge, wisdom. Some people are very courageous. Some, people, some persons are having unconditional love. So these are all the qualities only because of the emanations of the prana. These are all the exceptional qualities we see in great people. So what is the prerequisite for prana? So purity is the prerequisite for optimal use of prana. So mental power, will power, soul power, these are all the exceptional qualities of the prana. <coughs> so uh, um, Prabhakar sir told about me that I am a healer and uh, just I will talk only few lines about pranic healing. Uh, and uh, uh, today is uh, one more auspicious day, one more, one more important day according to pranic healing is concerned. Today, the pranic healing master who has given the technique of pranic healing to the entire universe, Master Chavakuk Sui, uh, he left his body on this day only, March 19th, 2007. So on this day, just I'm remembering him. He's a great guru, he's a great teacher. And uh, he has given this definition of pranic healing. <clears throat> so what is the definition of pranic healing? Pranic healing involves the transference of vital energy to heal the physical body. So first of all, we should try to understand what is the transference of energy. So in day-to-day -day life, I will tell you with small examples. Day-to-day -day life, we uh, shake hand to people. We hug the people. We just pat on the back. And we touch the feet of the people who are uh, respectable, who are elder to us. So these are all the ways uh, through which transference of energy is taking place. In all those uh, <clears throat> situations, we feel very happy. Suppose somebody hugs you, you feel very happy. Somebody sh shakes hands to you. At the time also you feel <clears throat> uh, very warm inside. Somebody touches on the back. Yes, you have done a great job. You feel very good, good feelings inside. So these are all uh, well, uh, happens only because the transference of energy is taking place. 
But this is not called pranic healing. Pranic healing is only when the healer intentionally transfers the energy to the patient, to the person who requires the energy. Then only we can call it as pranic healing. Uh, the one more definition that was given by Master is healing through prana is called pranic healing. So whenever we're talking about the healing, there are various techniques through which healing can take place. Suppose right now I'm suffering from cold and cough, I'm taking some herbs, uh, some um, herbal preparations as kashayam and I'm also using to heal my body. In the same way, some people use uh, allopathic medicine, some people use homeopathic medicine, some go for naturopathy, some go for panchakarma, some go for uh, uh, acupressure. So there are, there are various ways through which healing can take place. But here, the healing is taking place using prana as a medium, prana as an element, prana as a tool to heal the physical body. So prana is uh, the invisible life force, the energy, the vital energy through which the healing is takes place, which is the highest form of healing. So the earlier things which I told you, uh, they are using the physical things, which is visible. Here we are using the universal life force, the invisible energy to heal the body. So which was this technique was used by our uh, ancient saints and sages of India in the ancient times. <clears throat> so that technique was uh, very easily uh, given by the master for the entire humanity. So healing through prana is called pranic healing. <clears throat> now we will talk about uh, the five elements, uh, today's main topic. So what are the five elements and how to take energy from these five elements? That is my main uh, agenda of today's uh, topic, today's lecture. <clears throat> so what are the five elements? Uh, Prithvi, Jala, Agni, Vayu and Akash. Earth prana, water prana, sun prana, air prana, and ether prana. So, first we will talk about uh, the prithvi, earth prana. Uh, earth is having a natural property to absorb the toxins. Uh, in the ancient times, uh, our greatest uh, sages and saints of India, they used to stay in the caves mm -hmm. because they know the property of the earth. It can uh, take the toxins and uh, they can peacefully sit for long hours and uh, they can do the meditation. Uh, they can go for self introspection. They can do mantra chanting and other spiritual practices. <clears throat> so, in the Brahma Muhurta, uh, there is a healthy air emanating from the earth. So, that's the reason uh, the doctors say to walk barefoot, especially in the morning. Uh, if it is possible, if you walk in the grass, it is more advisable. So while walking in the earth, uh, what we have to visualize? Suppose you are in a position to walk in the grass, at the time just visualize that through the soles of the feet, uh, this prana that is contained in the earth, I'm drawing the prana through the soles of my feet, it is going inside my body, each and every cell, each and every particle, each and every chakra, each and every organ filled with this Prithvi Tattva and all the unwanted toxins and unwanted elements that are coming out from my body and my body is becoming pure and healthy. Right now, if you wish, we can do, uh, just uh, gently close your eyes, wherever you are sitting, <coughs> even though you are not sitting in the grass, but still 24 into 7 through the soles of the feet, we are drawing prana from the ground. That is happening automatically. But when we do with awareness, we can draw more amount of earth prana. So let us uh, do it. If all are ready, I wish you to do this uh, exercise. Just uh, sit spine erect and gently close your eyes. Deep inhalation and exhalation. Inhale very slowly and gently. Exhale very slowly. 
Inhale very slowly. Exhale very slowly. When you are inhaling, visualize you are drawing prana from the earth to the soles of the feet. Visualize that to an entire body, each and every cell, each and every particle, each and every chakra, each and every organ, filled with, with this earth prana. Uh, my body is completely recharged, regenerated, revitalized by this earth prana. And now gently exhale, visualize all the toxins on the unwanted elements, all the disease causing energy that is coming out from my body. From the soles of the feet, it is going inside the earth and Mother Earth is absorbing all the toxins, all the unwanted elements. Visualize. Once again, once again, inhale, visualize. Two deep inhalation. Experiencing the Prithvi Tattva, the earth prana entering into your system through both the souls going inside, flowing through the meridians, completely revitalizing your entire system and subsystems. They are completely recharged. Now when you are exhaling, visualize all the toxins, all the bacteria, all, all the viruses, all the germs, disease causing energies are expelling from your system to the soles of the feet and Mother Earth is absorbing these elements and you are completely pure and healthy. Now gently open your eyes. <coughs> so in this way, uh, while uh, walking in the grass, you can do this simultaneously. Now we will talk about uh, the Jala Tattva. We all know in Hindi, we call it as Jal Hi Jeevan. Water is like, water is one of the important sources of prana. Without food, you can live. But without water, we cannot sustain. Or the body cannot sustain for a long period of time. Because each and every cell in our body is having 72 to 75% water. <coughs> so, uh, daily in the morning, we take Ushapan, three to four glasses of water, at least one liter of water we take, empty stomach. So for cleansing the body and afterwards we go for uh, bathing. So while going for the bath, uh, it does not mean only to cleanse the physical body, but it is a process of energy in the body because only because water is having an electrical energy that is called Vishwa. So the Vishwa energy is completely recharging your body. And the water is also having oxygen, nitrogen, and other essential elements. So you are absorbing Vishwa energy and also these essential elements that is required for the body. And uh, whenever we drink the water, we have to drink a sip by sip, just like milk. So while drinking the water, we have to visualize that the water is filled with nectar. 
It is not like an ordinary water. And it is filled with coolness, sweetness. And I am absorbing this energy, this elements into my system. So with this intention, if you consume the water, if you take the water, if you drink the water, it will give the same benefit just like milk. And uh, here I want to add uh, one more uh, important uh, thing is that one uh, doctor, one uh, scientist, his name is Dr. Misaru Emeto. He belongs to Japan. He has done extensive research on water. So in his research, he has uh, revealed that water is having the ability to absorb our thoughts and emotions. So he did uh, various experimentation. Uh, you can see in uh, Google, you can see in Google, YouTube also, his videos are available. And he has written a book, The Hidden Messages in Water. In the book also, he mentioned all of these things. <coughs> what he did is, he crystallized the water. In front of the crystallized water, he said certain words. Suppose this is the water. And I'm saying, by seeing the water, I'm saying, you're looking very beautiful. When I say, you're looking beautiful, the water crystals are looking very beautiful. In the same way, I said, uh, thank you very much in front of the water. The water crystals are also responding very positively. Crystals are looking very good. So in the same way, he experimented with positive and negative thoughts and emotions in front of the water. <clears throat> he said, uh, by seeing the water, he said, you are looking very dirty. And uh, you are looking bad. So when he see, when he expose these negative words in front of the water, the water, water crystals are looking very dirty also. Their formation is not good. So by this experimentation, he realized that our water is having the capacity to absorb the emotions and thoughts. So here we have to understand, already I have discussed you, that every cell in, in our body is having 72 to 75 percent water. That means the whole body is contained 70 plus percentage of water. So uh, here I want to ask you one small question. In a whole day, how many thoughts we are having? And out of uh, these thoughts, how many are positive and how many are negative? Anybody can answer my question. In a whole day, how many thoughts we are having and out of uh, these thoughts, how many are positive and how many are negative? Anyone? The thoughts, uh, I am Raghava Bhuttapalli, madam. Yes. Uh, the thoughts yes. that we, we uh, any human being would get uh, in a day would vary a lot with positive and negative thoughts. And positive thoughts are, are like uh, when you are in a happy, happy mode. And in the unhappy mode, uh, it would be, it would be much lesser than the happy mood, exc excitation, power. So that varies uh, maybe some uh, hundreds to thousands of positive thoughts, especially when we are doing some academic activity, the thoughts on that academic activity, what we do would be, would vary, I think, uh, thousands. Mm -hmm. Thank you, madam. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. <clears throat> According to psychologists, in a day, we are uh, having 60,000 thoughts. 60,000. So out of uh, this, uh, according to the situation, just like you, <clears throat> you said, that some might be positive and some might be negative. So when the thoughts are positive, it is having a positive impact on our water, water content in the body. When the thoughts are negative, so it is having negative impact, definitely. So when it is having positive impact, then it is having the negative impact also. Because our water is absorbing our thoughts and emotions. 
So whenever the negative thoughts are coming, it is having adverse effect on our water content in the body. And later it is uh, manifesting as a disease in the body. So whenever there is a negative thought that is coming, we have to convert them into positive. Only because we don't want to pollute the water content in the body. We want to make our body healthy and strong. Now we will talk about uh, the Sun Prana, Agni Tattva. Sun is the major source of energy and today is Sunday, the day of uh, Lord Surya. So Sun is uh, the major source for all the living beings, not only for the human beings, for all the living beings on, on this earth. So we are supposed to absorb Sun Prana in sufficient quantity. Especially in Corona time, uh, we are more uh, focused on this Sun Prana report, vitamin D. Everybody is talking about vitamin D. Stay in the sun for some time, take vitamin supplements, vitamin D supplements, it will improve our immunity, all these things. Earlier, nobody is talking about this. <clears throat> so this Sun Prana is very, very essential for our well-being, for our good health. <clears throat> So in Indian tradition, there are various ways through which we are offering our reverence and respect to Lord Surya. So the first uh, and foremost important thing which we do in the morning is giving Argya to the Lord Surya. So while giving uh, Argya to the Lord Surya, what we have to visualize is, so Lord Surya's divine light is entering in each and every cell and particle of my body and my body is completely recharged by this energy. So with this intention, if you give the argya, the gel to the to Lord Surya and uh, you feel that uh, with this divine light is entering into my system and can completely recharge by this divine light, I am filled with vital energy, happiness and bliss. <coughs> so there are various ways uh, through which we can absorb the sun prana. And just like doing Surya Namaskara, um, sun bathing, staying in the sun for some time, keeping the water in the glass under the sun and bringing the water in the evening and you can drink the water. I did this experimentation in Corona time. So I kept uh, the bottle of glass, made up of glass in the sun in the morning and in the evening when I started drinking the water, the taste is very beautiful. You can compare the taste, the normal water and the water kept under the sun. You feel like drinking more and more water. The normal water you cannot drink much. So this is uh, very tasty. You can do this experimentation. <clears throat> and uh, one more uh, technique is just staying in the sun or roaming in the sun for some time, especially in times of uh, winter. And uh, one more important technique is taking the sun prana is fasting on Sunday. If you do, if you're able to do fasting on Sunday, you can absorb uh, more amount of sun prana. And you can also uh, <clears throat> take the divine light into your system. And suppose you are not in a position to do the full day fasting, you can do half day fasting. Half day you can keep uh, with fruits and salads and uh, after 12 o'clock you can do, you can eat the food. When you do this, it will enhance your willpower and energy in your system. But uh, <clears throat> the sun prana you cannot uh, take too much. Always moderation is very important because too much sun prana also causes uh, some adverse effects like cancer in the body. And one more interesting thing is that where the sun prana is not available, people are having the suicidal tendencies. <clears throat> in certain countries, uh, uh, there is a research that was done <clears throat> where the sun is not available. Uh, only three or four months in the whole year, they are able to see the sun. So in those uh, countries, people are having more uh, suicidal tendencies, depression, 
all these problems drop out. So they uh, they come to India and they go to the beaches and they stay in the sun. They do sun bathing. So they want to absorb more amount of sun. Now we will talk about uh, the air prana, Vayu Tattva. So 24 into 7, we are taking, we are, sorry, we are doing the breathing. We are taking prana from the air. By this, what we are doing? We are taking the air, not only air, we are also taking the prana that was contained in the air into our system. Now let us do uh, the pranayama to absorb more amount of air prana into our system. So this was uh, this pranayama is different uh, when compared to the pranayama that was already done by you. Probably you are doing some types of pranayamas, Nadi Shodhan, Nandam, Vyavanamastrika. There are various uh, techniques of doing pranayama. But this technique is very different. It is given by our Gurudev. So I wish all of you to do this pranayama. Uh, gently keep the spine erect. Close your eyes. <clears throat> if possible, you can sit in Padmasana. If not possible, sit, sit in Sukhasana or Vajrasana. Whichever asana is compatible for you. Do deep inhalation and exhalation. Inhale very slowly and gently. Exhale very slowly. Inhale very slowly. Exhale very slowly. When you are inhaling, visualize that you are drawing the universal life force, the prana, the vital energy into your system. It is going inside your blood. It is flowing through the meridians and it is accumulated in the navel chakra. Visualize <coughs> the universal life force, the prana you are drawing from the universe. It is going inside the blood is flowing through your meridians. It is accumulated in the narrow chakra. Completely involve yourself. Visualize as if it is already happening. Exactly into your system. When the lungs are completely filled with this air, then if possible, Hold the breath for 10 seconds. Otherwise, five seconds gently. <clears throat> and visualize prana is completely filled in my organs. <coughs> Afterwards, gently exhale. And slowly visualize all the toxins all the diseases, all the negative elements coming out from the system. Now once again inhale, visualize the universal life force, the prana going inside your system. You are drawing a tremendous amount of prana. Visualize you are bathing in the ocean of life energy. It is going inside your blood, flowing through the meridians, and it is accumulated in the navel chakra. Then gently hold the breath for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Now gently exhale, visualize all the toxins all the disease catching elements coming out from my body. Once again, inhale. I'm drawing prana from the universe. It 
is going inside my system, flowing through my blood, going deep inside to my nadis, and it is accumulated in the navel area, the Manipura Chakra. Now hold the breath for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Now gently exhale, visualize all the toxins, all the unwanted elements, all the this is causing energy is expelling from my system. Relax yourself, gently open your eyes. You can do this practice for uh, 10 rounds initially. And uh, a few days, you can increase this up to one hour. When you do this for one hour, you feel like your blood is flowing very fast. Your, your meridians are filled with new energy, freshness. And you feel like current is flowing inside. <coughs> when you do this practice continuously for a few days, your physical and mental health improve tremendously. Now, we will talk about the uh, most interesting uh, thing, Tattva, that is Akasha Tattva, Ether Prana. Uh, once I will talk about this uh, Ether Prana, and afterwards we will do a very small meditation on this Akasha Tattva. I wish uh, you like this meditation. So before going this meditation, we'll try to understand what is Akash Tattva. So Akash Tattva is uh, the most subtler when compared to the other Tattvas, other Pranas. So in order to understand this Akash Tattva, we should know about the four types of speech. So what are the four different types of speech? One is Vaikari Vani. So Vaikari Vani is like this, I'm talking and you are listening to me. It's like uh, the form of speech through words. So this is called Vaikari. Second one is Madhyama. So this is a form of speech which is expressed through sign language, facial expression, eye contact, body language. So, with this, what we are expressing? Our bhava, our emotions we are expressing. This is called Madhyama speech, Madhyama Vani. The third one is the Pashyanti Vani. So, this form of speech emerges from the mind and uh, which can heard only from the mind. Uh, sometimes you, we are all experiencing this. Uh, we had a lot of thoughts. With one thought, I will go to America, I will go to Australia. And sometimes I, re I recall where I am going, just I have to come back. So we are only experiencing these thoughts and it was experienced by us only. <clears throat> so it is coming from the mind and we only experiencing these thoughts. <clears throat> this is called Pashyanti Vani. Fourth one is Paravani. It is a form of speech which is coming from Antakkarana. Uh, it is coming in the form of uh, ambition, desire, determination, motivation, boon, curse, etc. It is called Sankalpa. So, these four types of speech, Vaikari, Madhyama, Pashyanti, or Para. These four types of speech are flowing in the universe. Flowing in the universe in the blue sky. So depending upon your consciousness, depending upon your elevation, you can able to connect yourself with these thoughts, with these four types of speeches. So here, in order to understand this in a very simple way, I will tell you the example of radio. Of course, we are having transistors, radios in our house. 
in earlier days in olden days everybody is having nowadays very few people are having this radios so in radio if you want to listen to music fm you can switch on fm if you want to listen to news you just tune into the other station if you want to listen to classical music one more station just you are switching the changing the stations in the same way <clears throat> these the spoken word the emotions the thoughts the sankalpas that are flowing in the universe in the form of subtle vibrations depending upon your own level depending upon your own consciousness you can attract <laughs> those thoughts those emotions those sankalpas those words from the universe probably you heard of people saying that uh, i am getting the message from my guru how this is happening because of the this akasha tattva because of this vibration that are flowing in the universe <clears throat> so now we will try to understand this with the help of one small meditation we will do this meditation so that we will able to feel that uh, vibration that energy that is flowing into your system for this there is no need to sit spine erect you can relax wherever you might be just only very brief meditation of 5 uh, to 10 minutes duration so simply close your eyes so you can take the help of your chair and you can lean on the back just like me and you can take the help of any pillow completely relax yourself gently close your eyes relax you can also put keep the uh, soft blanket and throw and you can lay down lie down also deep inhalation and deep exhalation inhale very slowly exhale very slowly inhale <coughs> exhale deep inhalation deep exhalation now visualize yourself surrounded by the blue sky you are relaxing you are sitting in a chair or you are taking the help of the pillow wherever you might be might be <clears throat> visualize that you are surrounded by the blue sky it is uh, very easy to think about the blue sky just go back to your childhood you are lying down on the floor on the terrace of your house and you are seeing the blue sky you are talking with the sun uh, talking with the moon and the stars just recollect take all those beautiful memories where it is very easy to meditate on the blue sky now go deep <clears throat> you are surrounded by the blue sky just when you think and when you meditate on the blue color it gives lot of uh, calmness lot of peace lot of tranquility inside completely immerse yourself you and the blue sky 
you are becoming one. Blue sky and blue. The clear blue sky, the good thoughts, <clears throat> the positive vibrations, the positive thoughts, the positive emotions. Good sankalpas are coming from all directions. Entering into your system. Visualize from the clear blue sky, positive thoughts, positive vibrations, positive emotions, satsankalpas, coming from all directions, entering into your system. With the influence of this subtle vibrations, subtle energies, your antakarana is filled with generosity, with love, humbleness, compassion, courage, wisdom. You are surrounded by the blue sky. You and the blue sky become one. From the clear blue sky, to Parapashinti Mantima Vaikin. The words, the emotions, the positive vibrations, Satsankalpa are entering from all directions into your system. With the influence, with the effect, of this positive vibrations. <clears throat> I'm filled with unconditional love, generosity, peace, compassion, mercy, forgiveness. All the virtues are awakening. And all the vices are pulled out, expelled from my system. I'm able to connect with my guru, with my deity, with the higher beings, with the masters, with my soul. I'm able to get the guidance from them. <clears throat> By doing this Akash Tattva sadhana, by doing meditation on the blue sky, you are able to get the blessings of the great people, the great sages, the great avatars. You are able to get the messages from your guru, from your guide, from your master. And your total personality will be transformed by doing this sadhana. Inhale very slowly and gently. Exhale very slow. Deep inhalation and exhalation. Feel the vibrations. 
feel the energy, feel the oneness with the blue sky, with the masters, with your Sadhguru, with your diet. Inhale very slowly and gently. Exhale very slowly. Deep inhalation and exhalation. Now come back to the body consciousness. Gently open your eyes with a big, big smile. Uh, no, we had any doubt, you can ask me. Sir, so, uh, any of you want to ask anything related to the presentation or anything? Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, can I ask you something like uh, the uh, like one thing I just came to know that you have said that meditating on the blue color gives immense peace. And uh, what about other colors? And this is a new thing for me. And very rightly, you have related to Akash Tattva. And could you please highlight something more on this aspect? Like. Huh. Actually, uh, blue color uh, is having uh, uh, the coolness. And you see in the operation theaters also, uh, the blue uh, color was used on the curtains and everything. Green and the green color also have you seen there. Green is a harmonizing color. Blue color is uh, having the property of uh, cooling in nature. So, uh, it is like anesthetic property also, blue is having. And uh, green, I told you, is a harmonizing color. So whenever there is a problem in the body, that means uh, the harmony is missing. So we have to use the green color there. And red is having the strong vital energy. Whenever you feel like uh, uh, the body is weak, uh, low vitality, and we can use the red color, you can wear uh, red clothes, just like vibrant, energetic. And uh, in the same way, orange is having the cleansing property. This is also very powerful. Orange is also very powerful. So violet color is... Uh, <coughs> Divine energy, uh, the energy from the soul is coming in the violet color and brilliant uh, the electric violet is the energy color is coming from the guru and the god and the higher beings and masters. So every, every color is having its own uh, significance. Uh, white is having uh, the more uh, uh, 
divine energy while white is uh, because white combines all the other colors white is in white only all the colors are mixing so pink uh, color is having the unconditional love so whenever you wear the pink clothes you feel like very um, soothing and very good uh, feeling inside very warm feeling inside the colors are having a very greater impact on our whole uh, system so people according to the mood people wear different types of clothes Uh, basing on their choice of clothing and the colors we can able to analyze their personality some people they always want to wear only white clothes because they want the peace they want that, that serenity that calmness they sometimes relate the colors to that uh, astrology something kind of things uh, they relate to brihaspati saturn Uh, of, course, uh, yes. of course of course in sunday sunday you have to wear light uh, half white color monday white color tuesday uh, uh, red color wednesday green color thursday yellow and golden yellow color friday blue and uh, saturday black so this is all the colors if you wear according to the day if you wear the clothes it will be more ideal you will get the energy from the particular graha ki ye jo graha ke bare mein aap bata rahe hai to this is something related to our shruti traditions se ya it is a part of smriti tradition coming under the color concept <laughs> actually it is uh, according to the astrology according to the day suppose sunday is for uh, lord surya monday is for uh, lord shiva <coughs> and uh, i think sir will uh, tell more about this concept the work of sir is thank you so much this concept than me but i can know a brief about the colors uh, because i usually wear according to the day i wear the color of the saree or the dress so it's very good all these years i'm following this you yes you are talking mm-hmm. you are completely our talk is it sir thank you very much and say so many offshoots come up from your talk mm-hmm. and color analysis color study itself is a big subject Mm-hmm. and astrologers pomis and religionists and all people she has now told that she has wear more the black color today being min mean, combination so these are all different subjects but now are not my much talking but anyway we sh- we all are recommended to recite the lalita sahasranamam and everybody do does lot of kumkum puja and all those things and now i am as uh, Dr. Vushaji is talking. I am just remembering so many namas from Lalita Sahasra Namam, where Lalita is the Parameswari and authority. And uh, just to say, because the Panchabhutas means uh, the way you look at them is always depending upon the individuals. So uh, we everybody has got the outlook to take out from the Panchabhutas. the lalita akash tatva and all these tatvas which is again all panchabhutas are pranas and we have to activate our inner prana with the help of the outer prana through the process of meditation and attachment and other methods and primarily water drinking the most important thing where from the prana is given to the body and from water only all pranas get activated and so i just want to mention i don't want here we have got a beautiful expression uh, madhyama vaikari rupa pasyanti paradevata like that we have all these uh, tatvas being completely present and monitored by lalita parmeshwari and again we have the expression panchami panchabhutesi panchasankhyopacharini so on 
and all the chakras, not only everything is there in Lalita Sahasranamam, but we are only fond of re reading them, but not getting into the meaning and the, that the, uh, the result that it is going to work upon us. But anyway, we believe that all that will work for that. And this is what pranic healing. And in fact, uh, when I visited at Rusha, she had purchased just then a big instrument to measure the prana inside for one and a half lakh or something like that. It was just probably we were the first victims for experiment at that time. <laughs> anyway, that's not matter. But anyway, so this is a big subject and we are just introduced uh, into the uh, pranic healing and uh, prana importance and the pancha bhuta class and all that. I'm very happy. And I would uh, request uh, Gayatri uh, to just add some points because Dr. Gayatri. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'm here. Yeah, please speak about five, 10 minutes about yes. your reflections. Yes, five, 10 minutes, sir. Okay. Namasabhaye, Sabhapati Pleasure. I uh, thank uh, Dr. Prabhakar for giving me this opportunity and all the listeners who are here. Uh, Madam, we are very delighted and you made us to go through some uh, meditation and all. And as uh, Prabhak, uh, Dr. Prabhakar said, I would like to start with uh, Kalidasa's uh, Abhijnana Shakuntala Mangala Shloka. Ya Srishtihi Srashturatya Vahati Vidhi Hutam Yaha Virya Chahotri Edve Kalam Vidhattaha Shruti Vishaya Gunaya Sthita Vyapya Vishwam Yama Huhu Sarva Bhuta Prakritiriti Yaya Praninaha Pranavantaha Vasta Bhirashta Bhiravatu Prapanastanu Bhihi Vasta Bhirashta Bhirishaha Here Kalidasa has uh, picturized Lord Shiva as Ashtamurti. Uh, that is, he has all the things as uh, the first uh, creation was water and then Agni, and then Hotri, Yajamana, and uh, Yaha Vidya Chahotri, Yetve Kalam Vidhattaha. So uh, two uh, parts of the day, that is sun and moon, that is day and night, and uh, Shruti Vishaya Guna, Yasthita Vyapya Vishwam, Shruti Vishaya Guna, that is Akasha, which is pervaded, ever pervaded, omnipresent, and uh, Yamahuhu Sarva Bhuta Prakriti Viti. So, where the it is the uh, base or the seat of all the uh, living beings that is the earth. Yaya Praninaha Pranavantaha. So, from which the all the living beings are living. So, these are that is the air. He has uh, given these Panchabhutas in his. And he is picturized Lord Shiva as Ashtamurti, as everyone uh, who has uh, studied or gone through Abhijnana Shakuntala knows. So another thing I want to uh, tell about Chakra is, I'm so much fond of uh, Saundarya Lahari, as uh, uh, Prabhakar sir rightly said in uh, Ganesha Stuti of uh, Dikshitar, that is uh, Vatapi Ganapati Mbaje, Paradi Chatvari Vagatmakam, Pranavasvarupa Vakratindam, and Muladhara Kshetrastitam. So Muladhara is the place. This once uh, Dr. Padmanabh, who is a very famous uh, a musician, in his discourse he was telling, so by doing alapana in uh, uh, music uh, ragas, the muladhara will be cleansed. So the cleansing of muladhara will, will lead to the clarity in our thoughts and in our words. So that is why Ganapati is uh, said to be in muladhara kshetra because he is the seat of Walk. As Madam said, 
ಮಹಿಮೂಲಾಧಾರೆ ಕಮಿ ಮಣಿಪೂರೆ ಹುತವಹಂ ಸ್ಥಿತ ಸ್ವಾಧಿಷ್ಠಾನೆ ಮರುತಮಾಕಾಶಂಪದಿ ಮನೋಪಿ ಭೂಮಧ್ಯೆ ಸಕಲಮಿ ಭಿತ್ವಾಕುಲಪಥ ಸಹಸ್ರಾರೆ ಪದ್ಮೇ ಸಹಸಿ ಪತ್ಯ ವಿಧರಸಿ ಸೊ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ಸಮ್ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಐ ಬಿಲೀವ್ ಎಸ್ ನೋ ಸೈಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ರಾಘವ ಗಾರು ಚಪ್ಪಂಡಿ ಅವನ ಐಡಿಯಾಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅವರ್ ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಐ ರಿಯಲಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ the speaker wonderful wonderful presentation with uh, excellent concepts of the five panchabhutas and uh, in 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 this uh, when she was speaking i could remember as as professor prabhakar remembered the uh, lalita sahasramam i remembered the shrimad ramayana so shrimad ramayanam several devatas will come and sit at the putra kamyeshti yaga of dasharatha maharaja they sit there and and uh, later Bra- brahma garu will come so when when when, when uh, brahma entering the agnya shala there is a process there is a protocol because after all he is the one who who has given what is that uh, not birth directly but uh, uh, created this entire universe the all the universe all the lokas and uh, when he entered everybody has to stand so everybody stood up and uh, and they wanted to, the devatas wanted to share with him the dushta charyas of ravana mahabrahma <laughs> so but what what he felt was that what they felt was that the devatas that the, the right thing has to be said it is not just he is uh, he is killing us or he is uh, fighting with us like that these are all very simple because he has given the boons brahma has given the boons to ravana not to kill by any living organism but when this when when devata said that he is he is stopping and he is giving tremendous uh, inhibent in uh, inhibit inhibitance for uh, panchabhutas because when surya is shining when he is when he is coming out of his of his kingdom so surya should come down his his tejas has to come down like that vayu should not breeze tremendously but it has to be very nice and nice and neat and it should be it should be feather touching and likewise when when the sea sh- at the when the uh, at the at the ocean when he stands uh, no waves should come and touch his feet so these are the aspects uh, of the panchabhutas uh, what what ravana brahma was stopping because it is all there is vayu has the one dharma agni has one dharma 
and akasha has one dharma so these are all created by parameshwara paramatma whether you call vishnu or or lord shiva so these 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 panchabhutas they were afraid of ravana brahma ravana sura so then when he when the devata said to brahma about this panchabhutas he is stopping like this their activity and others in grishma ritu surya mm-hmm. has to bright tremendously otherwise as aruna prashna said it can surya if, if he is not bright enough in the grishma ritu so what is the, what are the seasons then so there is no value for seasons so when 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 he shines more surya shines more he takes more water into the atmosphere and in the next ritu he will bring tremendous rains which are very helpful for the farmers and the human beings so likewise these panchabhutas were literally inhibited by by ravana sura and these were expressed by the deities devatas there in the in the putragameshti yaga for what purpose they said these things to bring rama avatara so this rama avatara has come because of this panchabhutas rama avatara has come when devata said that these are all inhibited by the by by the, by ravana sura then he brahma said yes in several boons i have i have said like this but there is only one boon that he will not be killed by a human being no it is actually ravana sura did not ask brahma because that, that that's what valmik maharshi tells in the ramayana in one of the 24 24000 shlokas that trana prana human beings are trana prana so they are not at all they, are, they he, he considered them as grass ravana sura considered considered human beings as grass living organisms so i don't ask because they cannot kill me so that's how the because of this uh, telling about this panchabhutas uh, by the devatas to brahma then brahma said that uh, paramatma will come as rama avatara narayana will come as naranarayana excellent he was that was the beauty of uh, the shrimad ramayana by sri valmik maharshi bringing out these five panchabhutas so when when uh, some time uh, some days back uh, when professor prabhakar uh, sir said this uh, uh, that uh, one lady will speak uh, one madam will speak about uh, these panchabhutas i i am sure that she will bring out this particular uh, ramayana class of this without that there is no ramayana so one has he has to be killed ravana has to be killed how he will be killed so so vishnu paramatma narayana will come as naranarayana and the dharma the panchabhutas have the dharma who cre- who has given those dharmas given by lord lord shiva or lord vishnu so this this para- this this dharma, this dharma it was a wonderful conference what professor prabhakar has conducted last year the, this 22 december 22 and the veda ganga of 28 has come with that particular aspect of dharma and adharma it is one have one it still we can speak on that dharma and adharma probably if we conduct another conference of this year also in a new week so it is such a wonderful topic because our entire sanatana dharma is just depend on this dharma so there is no other go that dharma and adharma will go as the as the train track having two 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 trail rails and it will be the train will be going on that that is human being the train is so human beings is should 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 go more with dharma and they should stop it is very difficult in this kali yuga saying that uh, that you should not do any adharma 
very difficult it is absolutely difficult in kali yuga so bringing uh, coming back to this panchabhutas so rama avatara is depending on this panchabhutas because of uh, this and, it, and today's topic uh, was a wonderful topic uh, and she brought out very nice ideas uh, and also practical aspects of uh, this panchabhutas uh, she revealed it to us uh, and we were very happy thank you very much madam and thank you so professor prabhakar sir thank you very much now we conclude we asked bharadwaj govin he is there please uh, give a vote of thanks to all of us oh he is there in from chicago he is a software engineer a student of our kendra yeah, yeah. <coughs> namaskaram my name is bharadwaj i am in chicago um <coughs> om namo narayanaya uh, sir uh, prabhakar sir thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to um to provide a few um the vote of thanks to the you know speakers today uh, <clears throat> so uh, to begin with uh, i want to thank uh, sri prasad garu to uh, for starting today's session with the shanti mantra uh, thank you sri prasad garu uh, followed by uh, the <clears throat> the shloka by i, I believe uh, i may have not captured the name correctly i think sri vasan uh, for uh, you know giving us the shloka uh, after that and then followed by i really want to i really enjoyed first of all and also i really want to thank the two girls again sorry i did not capture the names uh, for uh, singing such a melodious song the parvati kumaram bhavaye song it was so enjoyable uh, singing uh, thank you again and followed by the, the little girl uh, that was like amazing uh, performance the the singing of muladhara murti song by the little girl uh, again it's such a wonderful and melodious uh, singing thank you then uh, followed by uh, sir uh, prabhakar sir uh, again uh, your inauguration speech always i always enjoy you know you you speak very practically and then you know you talk very thought provoking uh, provoking we you you make us connect the dots right panchabhutas are there like you know you know we we go through that like every day like 24 by 7 without that there is no life right so you make us uh, connect the dots uh, um, uh, again uh, thank you for the inauguration speech followed by the keynote uh, 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 dr usha jayswal garu uh, thank you for such a wonderful uh, discourse on the panchabhutas very thought provoking and you know um, <clears throat> and practicing those uh, the panchabhuta exercises that like you know very very useful we all kind of know it but unless until somebody tells us to do you no know, we don't realize the value and benefits of the panchabhutas again thanks for you know reminding us the value of the panchabhutas uh, uh, very excellent and useful discourse today uh, thank you so much um, followed by uh, the <clears throat> uh the concluding remarks by sri gayatri garu uh, thank you again um, for uh, sri gayatri garu and then uh, followed by um, sri raghav garu uh, again uh, doing the concluding remarks um, uh, and you know using the ramayana as uh, uh, the means like you know, how the, the benefits of panchabhutas and uh, the the reflections of the panchabhutas again thank you so much sri raghav garu um so uh, with that i would request uh, for this session uh, today session uh, it's a wonderful session uh, thank you everyone for joining uh, today session um, if there is anything else uh, uh, we can talk or, or we can concluding uh, the session today sir uh, i think i think you are on mute sir <laughs>